Welcome to today's 3D print. We have another printer since the Modern Price Mini was a bust. Thanks to GearBest, this is the ANET E12. That is their version of the CR10. Stay tuned. Here's the box opened up, their fake build tacky material. I'm already not liking this plug, it's like on the E10, so hopefully that's not so bad. Um, I do like that the plastic strips are really bright orange. I'm still going to remove them probably. It's interesting to note that this was packed with these on the corners, which is good because that will take the impact damage and spread it over all of the foam. So it reduces the likelihood of damage in shipping. That's good. Smart move, a net. Um, hopefully you used all of the wires on that because this is a much bigger bed. For now, I'm going to put this on here, and if I like the print results on this printer, I will see if I can slap a piece of my Aurora A5 glass on here. It's a little bigger than this print bed, but that's okay, because this has sticky stuff underneath it. So we shall see, because I do have two pieces of this, and I do have two pieces of the AnyCubic coming in, so I don't really need to save it, so I might as well use it. We'll see what kind of print quality I get first. I'm going to pull everything out and show you what's inside. Alrighty, here's everything that is inside the box. Um, I do have to warn you, there are similar quality control issues as I saw with the E10. That doesn't mean it's a bad printer, but that does mean you're going to have to be careful. Um, this was already set to 110 volts, so you European guys, be careful. If yours is set to 110 and you plug it in, it's toast. 220 safe, 110 not safe. Because if you plug a 220 into a 110, nothing happens. If you plug a 110 into a 220, smoke. Okay, comes with a spare um, heat block nozzle and heat brake. Um, spare screws. Some of these might be used to install the spool holder. Um, actually, no, those are in here. So these are just spares, different hammer nuts and screws. Looks like they're all the same. Uh, this comes with the two screws for the spool holder and the two screws. Why are they a different size? Why in the world are they a different size? This might be missing one of the screws. It's supposed to be two M620s and two M410s, but I see an M620 and an M415. Oops. I might have trouble assembling this printer if that part is wrong. I'm pretty sure I need two of those M620s to install the gantry. Since this uses single instead of double, so it uses 2020 instead of 2040. Shame on you, Enet, for cutting costs there. 3D printed spool holder. The control box has the same problem that I had with the E10 control box in that these aircraft printers are loose. I can turn them by hand. So you do need to be careful with that and make sure you do not twist these and tear up the wires inside. Um, same slip-on um, limit switch connectors as on the E10. Otherwise it looks pretty much like the E10. They just upscaled it. It does have dual Z, um, but this is loose. I can see how it wobbles there. Yeah, all those bolts up top there are loose. Um, this one feels like it's tight. I don't see anything loose on this one, but this part has loose parts. This is not loose. This is nice and tight, but they use the same damn off-center triangle for the construction that they did on the E10. So you got two wheels on the left and one wheel on the right, which means this thing wants to pitch up like that. It doesn't seem to affect printing, but it makes tightening it down a bear. This hot end looks identical to the E10, so I could probably use the same um, hot end shroud replacement that CNC Kitchen designed for this as well, so I will probably do that if it fits. Spool holder, cheap metal, but it doesn't need to be strong, it's fine. Um, zip ties, power cord, USB cable, reader, and micro SD card, Bowden tube, which I will probably cut in half. Even comes with a little ruler, which is kind of cool. That's a nice little addition. Cheap build tack knockoff. That annoying thin, mine also came bent. Um, H, three piece H bracket for the Y carriage plate, but it worked okay on the E10. And they do compensate by using an extra thick aluminum PCB, which I do like, because that means you get a nice stable surface. Um, sharpened spatula, screw, screwdriver that's flippable. Nice pair of nips, which I don't believe the E10 came with. Maybe did, I don't know, but nice pair of nips, same ones that the Creality comes with. Two lame samples of PLA in white. Allen keys, and that's it. By the way, everybody always wonders, how do you get these in? Just tip the whole printer up like this. And just put your hand on the motor here to keep it from going anywhere, that's all. 
and that's got a lot of fluff in the way. So then you just put the screw in, that's all. Partially through assembly, and the quality is about the same as the E10, and the bad quality control is about the same as the E10 too. Um, these were not tight, so these moved on me. So what you're gonna need to do is to loosen these a little bit, slide the bed all the way to one end, push the bed back a little bit, tighten them. Loosen those down there, slide the bed down there, that'll line these up, then tighten them. Be careful because they will move. Uh, the ones up here, they were also loose, so I'm going to have to loosen these again, raise this all the way to the top, then pop these loose, and retighten them again to make sure that they're not going to bind and cause any kind of problems. These are a little bent, the brackets themselves, but I don't think it's going to cause a problem. They are all the way down, so leave it alone. These were the only bolts on the printer that were tight. These two here, and these two here, and the two on the other side. And I had to steal one to do this. So I'm missing one up front now because I needed one for the gantry, since the second bolt that came was the wrong size. Um, each bracket was bent again. I had to pull up to re-straighten it, but it does have a nice thick plate. Um, these top bolts here were loose. Uh, the only thing not loose is the belt looks good. It could use maybe a tiny bit of tightening. I don't know. I'll, see, I'll let it print first. This does appear to be nice and tight, at least as tight as it's going to get with an eccentric triangle. Um, this appears to be nice and tight. I didn't see any problems with that. I don't like the way that lifts because of the bracket. Uh, I might design a fix for that if I can. I did not check these to see if they were tight. Uh, no, they were loose too. Basically, bad quality control just like with the E10. So make sure you go through and align and tighten everything. I mean, the materials are okay. It's just bad quality control. A suggestion when you're putting these plugs on, Hold the plug firmly by here, right there, and then turn the screw so that you don't let your hand turn this, so that you can't accidentally turn this connector inside here, because you will shred the wires on the inside. It's the next day. It made the test prints. I have the rocket, the Benchy, and the Marvin. I'm going to include pictures at the end. For now, I can give you a little video. It is not bad, but not great. You're not going to see much if we hold them up. You can wait and change the pictures at the end. And um, it works. It has a lot of QC issues. Almost all the same QC issues as the E10. <laughs> it's like, come on. Uh, first, it was missing a bolt for the gantry. I had to take one of these bolts, so I got to order some more bolts. That's fine for now. Um, these were loose, so when I tried to pull the strips off, these moved. So you have to realign them. The way you do that is you slide the bed all, loosen them, slide the bed to one end, gently push it back, tighten them, loosen those, slide the bed all the way down, pull back, tighten them. That'll align the rails for you. Because if the rails aren't aligned, it's going to have binding. And even if it does work, the binding is going to cause noise to be introduced into your prints, and you don't want that. Um, they did rotate the motors, that's a good thing, um, but half the screws in the entire thing were loose. These were loose, these were loose, um, a couple of the grub screws were loose, probably not enough to cause a failure, but enough that eventually it'd come loose. Um, it does go to the full 400 millimeters. Um, these big bolts here were the only ones that were tight. Um, actually the Z motors were also tight. The um, wire for the micro switch here was in the way as well. All the same problems you had with E10, you're going to have with this and you're going to have to fix. The heat bed does heat up fast, impressively fast, like less than five minutes here at 50 degrees. Um, the plug is the same kind of plug that's on the E10, although they are using all four wires, so hopefully that will improve things a little bit. Um, beyond that, it is working. I th These prints are okay. So, a lot of QC problems. They really, really goobered up the quality control on the printer. They didn't make it worse, they just didn't improve anything over the E10. So all those issues that were there in the E10 are here in this printer. And that's, well, 
I'm sorry, ain't it? This is your second try at this. I'm not going to be as nice. I mean, you should have corrected those issues. They're easy to fix issues. Instead of spending pennies adding these stupid strips to the printer and paying somebody to install these stupid strips into the printer, forget the strips and spend the exact same amount of money to pay that person to make sure everything here is aligned and tight. That will go a long way. I know to look for these things. Average Joe doesn't. Average Joe's going to get this printer and pull their freaking hair out trying to figure out why it's not working right because of that. Um, hopefully it'll print as good. Something is up with the print and I can't quite put my finger on it. I don't know what's going on. It looks okay, but it looks off. So I got to try a few more prints. This was my straight CR10G code, so maybe that's why. But... I don't really change a whole lot between one printer and another in my G-code. I mean, the only thing I change is temperature, extrusion, and dimensions. I, I, there's A lot of people think there's magical tweaking in Simplify 3D. There isn't. I, I, do, you, I tweak the Simplify 3D for this printer, and then I tweak it for CR10. The only thing I change is temperature and cooling, and um, extrusion multiplier. That's it. Otherwise, the changes I make are per model. So when I'm printing this, I know I need a particular set of settings to get it to print. But those particular set of settings are the same across all printers. So like this one I know I can do with two outlines and three top and three bottom. Okay. So all the printers are going to do it with two outlines, three top, three bottom. All the printers are going to do this with no bottom and a single outline corkscrew. And, you know, that, that's not going to change. The other problem I had was that... um. I seem to be getting skipped steps on the extruder, and I'm not sure why. It's not slipping, it's skipping. Uh, I'm watching it go, and then watching it go, dunk, dunk, and turn back. Because it can't push for some reason. Increasing the temperature seemed to help, but that made the print really glossy. I'm not sure why. It's almost like it was trying to shove too much filament through, but the print looks good. I mean, I got some noise. I think that's the rails. And I also think I need to tighten this belt up a little bit, so I'm going to tighten that belt. But um, beyond that, we'll see. I'm going to do some test prints. I got some prints queued up for it. Big snowflakes, some deer, some big tall trees. You know, I got some different prints queued up. And over the next week, I will print them out and work on it and see what happens. And get back to you guys. Um, if I can make this printer print as nice as the E10... I would give it a safe to buy, even with the QC issues, because none of the QC issues are fatal. It's the same as the E10, you just gotta tighten things up and tweak things. This one's more than tight enough, this one's a little loose. Um, otherwise, everything is okay. Um, if a CR10 costs 400 bucks, this is not a bad deal at 320. If a CR10 costs $330, don't buy this, buy the CR10. <laughs> it's just a better quality printer. Um, I'll get back to you and let you guys know what I find out.